went back to a regular five day a work week job um, trying to get some more prepping money pulled together so things have been kind of interesting and busy so I haven't really had too much time to make any videos um, planning on making a couple videos this next two days while I'm off work so hopefully I'll get some things posted up for you guys but um, the job that I'm doing I just wanted to tell you a little story uh, I had a couple yesterday um, some clients that were telling me they have a 15 month old baby and they kept talking about him having a new disorder that's only been recognized in the medical field for the past maybe nine months and been a few cases but it's a new I don't know if they're calling it disorder disease syndrome whatever but basically as I got to inquiring with them about it what it is is their baby is allergic to GMO foods um, they uh, have to feed him only right now organic heirloom vegetables and fruits he's not able to his stomach's not able to handle any food that's got anything else in it um, he it just as soon as it goes into his stomach he throws it up it's like uh, his body's treating it as if it's food poisoning so we had some long conversations about that um, they are doing some gardening now and uh, this year first year doing it and it's brought a lot of awareness to them about genetically modified foods and what my thought processes were um, after my day ended and I, I spent the evening thinking about it because it really it broke my heart for the little boy and then I thought you know what actually um, that's a good thing that's a blessing in disguise this child's body was born with a disposition to know when the food that what goes into it is unhealthy and it does go to prove yet again that uh, the officials who tell us what's safe and what's not safe to put in our bodies are either a lying to us or b don't give a damn or c don't know what they're doing um, I thought, you know, actually it's kind of a blessing for him um, because we know that the GMO foods can cause cancers, tumors, all kinds of ailments and disorders. <laughs> so, but the thing that I really got to thinking about was, you know, humans and animals, we evolve through generations. Um, immunities are passed down from mother to child and then... Um, genetics start to play a factor as far as making sure that um, an individual whether it be an animal or a human can handle certain environmental um, stresses and issues that his ancestors have had to deal with so isn't that amazing if you think about it that in the past nine months there have been babies that are born whose bodies reject genetically modified foods. I mean, if you really let that sink in for it for a, a medical shift in genetics to happen so quickly in such a short generational time, um, it's kind of amazing to me because normally evolution takes, from what I had understood, several generations. But it also goes to show that um, these foods really are that bad. These foods really are that bad for baby humans to now be being born rejecting them. I'm hoping this is happening in the animal kingdom as well and we just don't know it yet because we can't target it yet. And I know that there's a lot of deer, a lot of deer around where I'm working at. and these deer look sick I mean they're super skinny scrawny their hairs falling out a little bit but everybody says that they've been tested there's nothing wrong with them they don't have diseases or anything like that nobody knows why maybe it was just a rough winter it wasn't a rough winter we had a couple of snowstorms 
um, and some of them were deep snows, but they weren't very cold snows, and they melted very quickly. So I don't believe it was a rough winter like that. Um, could it be that all 20 of the last year that I've seen happened to have just given birth recently and didn't have a fawn with them? Um, unlikely. Um, or if so, are their fawns just dying off as soon as they're born? You know, leaving the scrawny mother walking around. I don't know, but I know that I'm seeing sickly looking animals. And it's in a high enough number and it's on a daily basis so I can, I can really genuinely attest to it. Um, at least in this area. But I thought the story was kind of interesting. I wanted to tell you guys about it. They did have a name for it. I do not remember the name. Um, you know, it was uh, some funky name that it wasn't like a person's name or anything. It was, but it was a name for this new disorder. And they, of course, they have no cure and blah, blah, blah. And I told the parents, I said, I'm not so sure that I would want a cure for my child for that. I, I'm not so sure that I would want them to be able to eat GMO foods that the body is saying this isn't good for you and that we know causes cancers. I mean, why try to encourage his ability to do that? I know it's uh, difficult to find foods. You know, it's difficult to find foods that don't have GMO or uh, preservatives, BHD and all that in it, but if you've got your own internal, you know, warning system that says, okay, yeah, maybe the, maybe it wasn't labeled, maybe it looked like it was good, but it's not, I think that's a blessing, but it's still, it's really scary, and I think it speaks very loudly, and I think we're going to see a lot more of this, so I wanted to bring that to your attention, um, that's one of the good things about this job that I'm doing is I'm having more interaction with the general public and so not just other preppers or like-minded people. So it's given me a little bit more insight as to how the other half of the world is viewing and experiencing our current world. But I can tell you this, um, I've met two families per day every day for the past week so that's 10 families and they're from areas that are about two hours from here some north some south you know coming into the resort that I'm working at to um, take vacation and every one of them every single one of them has had a story that that's the things that we talk about that we say, we see, or we hear, or we think, or we expect, um, it's just confirmation that, yes, guys, you know, we do need to be prepared, um, and there are things that are coming down on us right now that we didn't even know. We didn't expect them this early. There's some things, you know, you walk around, you think this could happen any moment now, and there's other things that you think, oh, in a couple of generations, or, oh, in a few years, but... It's pretty clear to me that it's a very good thing that I've gone back to bringing in a paycheck to rebuild our prep base, our prepping base. Um, I'm pretty anxious to have a day off tomorrow and, you know, go do some prepping, uh, get some more things put together. So I just wanted to throw that out there at you that, yes, GMI foods really are in our main food chain and they're in baby foods. Um, they're feeding them to our babies, and some of our babies are rejecting them physically. So, hope you guys have been good. Um, like I said, I hope to get some more videos out to you shortly, and I'll talk to you guys soon.